Okay, so Power Yourself Yoga. Today, we're going to get into the um, a Hawaiian perspective on the higher self or the oversoul. Uh, this is from Hank Wesselman's work. So earlier this year, I think the year before that too, I visited Hawaii twice in the last year, the big island specifically. And I came across a particular author and his experiences with uh, shamanism and uh, out-of-body explorations. They matched up surprisingly synchronistically with some of the things that um, that I was experiencing. So we're going to be um, diving into a little bit about his story today and what it was that he discovered about higher self uh, over soul. So I, I wrote this out too, because I wanted to make sure that I, um, I touched on all of these points. You know, having taught and um, studied Buddhism for, uh, for so many years, you know, a lot of you have, have been with me for a while now. It's, it's really interesting to, to be at a place in your journey where the realizations and the direct experiences that you have, they, they no longer fit into the model of reality that uh, your training was in. So what I'm going to share today by, by Buddhist standards is uh, classified as wrong view and certainly as proposing the Atman doctrine or some version of it. Right. So I really can't deny that indeed um, that is exactly what I've stumbled upon. I mean, this is purely, it's not exactly like the Hindu Atman doctrine from the Vedas, but it's some, it's somewhere between Buddhism and that. So at least if we're going to compare it to earth teachings. So what I've stumbled upon is that there is indeed a plane of experience or a level of, of intelligence that we could call uh, Atman uh, or higher self. Um, to my knowledge, it's, it's not this uh, unchanging essence and it doesn't qualify as Nirvana, um, which also makes what I'm saying wrong by, uh, by the Hindu standards. <laughs> so realization of this higher self, it doesn't destroy the, the cause of rebirth, which is craving, obviously the goal in uh, in Buddhism, but nonetheless, higher self is an experiential, discoverable, and explorable reality. It is a it is you on a higher plane. So when we're dreaming, our our dream body and and self is is not aware that we're asleep, right? The you in the dream has no idea about the you that's laying down in bed. Uh, if you did, actually, this would con constitute a lucid dream. So the relationship of your waking self, that your waking self has to your dreaming self is like the relationship your higher self has with your waking self. The waking self is unaware of the reality of the higher self until it begins to awaken and discover it. It's possible and likely that the higher self is the dream of some even more advanced intelligence. So we'll refer to both the human waking state and the higher self plane as, as levels of dreaming as I have in earlier lectures. In both the uh, Hindu and Buddhist models of consciousness and rebirth, lives occur in succession, sequential incarnations. From the vantage point of this single mind body we have that is existent in time at this moment, this is obvious and correct. But from the vantage point of the higher self, as I've experienced it, on the level of dreaming it resides at, the incarnations in this physical level are multitudinous and simultaneously are multitudinous and simultaneous. During my explorations of the higher self mainframe, I discovered a room, an area of consciousness in which my simultaneous incarnations appeared on screens. And by placing my attention on these screens, I would appear in the body of that life. 
seeing through its eyes and doing whatever it was doing. So I've yet to explore more of this particular part of the higher self mainframe, but Bob Monroe details it extensively in uh, Ultimate Journeys. He uh, went a lot further than I did. So, and like I mentioned before, we started recording his, his incarnations appeared as a, a, a bed of flowers. And uh, when he, when he would look at a flower, a face would appear. And if he'd put his attention on it, he'd appear in that life in the same way that I, I did with these screens. So all these screens and flowers, they're simultaneous. So the, the realities of the lives that you enter, they could be in any period of time. So when I had placed my attention on one of these screens, I appeared in the body of a woman who was dressed like she was in the seventies, the architecture or the design of the inside of the house was like the seventies. And she was just looking at her back porch, you know, nothing particularly important. Um, but as I explored uh, other screens and had a, there was an effect after I came out of that state where it seemed that um, with each second that was passing, I felt that my body was changing or my face was changing. Like each second it felt like my face would change to another person. And so some of these lives were as women, other lives as men, uh, other lives as warriors, artists, like monks, you know, it was all over the map. Yeah, so the implications of this, it made me really reconsider the whole uh, linearity and uh, sequential incarnation model that's proposed in Hinduism and, and in Buddhism as well. The Atman doctrine, uh, as stated in the Vedas, it, it, it's presented that the higher self only animates one body at a time. And the body dies and it's like changing clothes for this spiritual self or this, this higher self. Once the physical body dies, it just, it just occupies another one and another one, another one in this evolution towards um, Brahman or towards uh, God. So it's like one dream ending and then another dream beginning. And this does appear to Kate appear to be the case if you're in linear time and if you've never explored outside this uh, physical body or you've never had you know, out of body experiences or experienced the higher self plane, none of this would be uh, apparent at all. It would not, I don't think it would ever have occurred to me that a thing called simultaneous incarnation even existed or even exists. So it may also be the case that some higher selves, they, they do only have one incarnate, you know, one dream self on earth at a time. And that this is the basis for the Hindu and uh, Buddhist models of it. But in my case, from the higher self plane, it appears that I'm one of thousands of simultaneous dream selves all uploading to and receiving information from this higher self plane or higher self. So like imagine playing thousands of video games simultaneously. So if it's one person, one controller and one avatar, that's sequential. But if it's uh, thousands of avatars, that's more like what I uh, experienced. In my view, the, the higher self doesn't control your life, but it certainly guides it. And uh, earlier this year, when I had gone to the uh, Big Island, stumbled across uh, Hank Wesselman's work. He was a anthropologist and a professor at the University of Hawaii. And while he was living on the big island in the mid to late eighties, he started to have these very unusual mystical experiences. Uh, while living on the big island, he began to have these out of body experiences into the body of an unknown man. So 
and these out of body experiences for him were extremely long. I mean, like 10, 12 hour journeys, which is, I mean, that's wild. Most of my OBEs, like at the most, they felt like an hour, but like half a day, that's pretty, I mean, that, that could mess with you. That's how powerful or, or, or unique that is. So it's discovered eventually through, through Hank's, uh, journeys and it's, uh, all detailed in his book, spirit Walker. Uh, it, it becomes clear that he's actually consciousness transferring to a shaman that lives 5,000 years in the future and 5,000 years in the future in this uh, remnants of earth, it appears this uh, Hawaiian civilization has moved to uh, what, what once was California and this, this guy's on this journey and he starts to um, experience the shaman, the, the spirit realm as, as well. So while Hank is having his awakening to this whole other side of life, this um, astral plane and the oversoul, this other version of himself in the future is also having the same awakening. So yeah, this is all in Spirit Walker. It's fantastic. Um, I highly recommend uh, reading it as well, as well as the, the Journeys trilogy. <laughs> so Hank has a direct experience with the higher self in Spirit Walker. Um, fortunately, he is essentially towards the end of towards the end of the book. He has this initiatory experience where this ancestral spirit um, reveals to him the levels of intelligence or the operating or governing principles uh, within himself and then also like within the universe and this is where he he has direct contact with the oversoul so in in huna in hawaiian shamanism this oversoul is called amakua and i'll just read from the slides to uh, to make it easy when amakua is spelled with a capital a it refers to our immortal ancestral spiritual lineage that Makua, who was a mentor to Hank, often referred to as simply the ancestors, as it incorporates all of our former lives and and thus all our former selves. As such, the Amakua is our higher self that modern mystics often call the Oversoul, a term coined by the American poet and philosopher Ralph Waldo Emerson. And this is from the mentor, one of uh, Hank's mentors himself. Our Amakua itself is a spiritual dream body. Our distinct and separate immortal soul, our higher self that lives always in the spirit world. This can serve us as a portal through which we dream and can travel into the worlds of spirit while we are still embodied here. Through its gift of our light, that comes into each into us in each lifetime. It becomes part of each of us here. So when you're having an out of body experience and you have the intention to go somewhere and then suddenly a portal of light appears and you're able to go there, it wasn't your conscious mind that generated that portal and it's 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 so it's so easy to overlook i mean you could have like a hundred out-of-body experiences go from here here to there meet this guy to meet that guy but for some reason it never occurs to you what part of you is making the portal appear or what part of you is phasing allow is like making it possible for your consciousness to phase from one place to another uh what part of you is is guiding these experiences and that's really the amakua the oversoul uh hail makua who's most of the quotes in this in these slides are attributed to he was an indigenous uh shaman also a veteran um in hawaii 
And I think Hank met him after the Spirit Walker trilogy, or at least after the first two books were written, because by the time they had met, Hank was already teaching shamanism and and all of this. So when he finally met um, Hale Makua, or maybe his name's Hale, I'm not totally sure, uh, he confirmed a lot of his experiences, and that was really critical um, for him because he didn't have formal uh, Hank didn't have formal shamanic training. He was just an anthropologist that started having these really profound levels of out of body experience. And then he sought training from uh, shamanism teachers like Michael Harner and uh, others in the, in the field. Sandra Ingerman, for example, he was an associate of hers. Um, but he was still considered, you know, an outsider when it came to this knowledge and um, that particular tradition. So for him to have his his insights and his uh, experiences confirmed by uh, Hale uh, Makua, it was really important to him. So this is a conversation that um, was between Hank and... Um, Hale Makuna in a book called The Bowl of Light. So it starts with Hank, I'll read it. So Hank says, the Buddhists maintain that there is no such thing as a self. I added cheerfully, they believe that the self is actually an illusion. What do you think about this, Makua? Interesting idea. He responded with a bellow of laughter. You see, Makua's eyes looked upward as if he was searching for terms for words to express his thoughts in English. This Buddhist idea is merely a theory. I don't believe that the one called the Buddha ever said this. If he had experienced authentic initiation and we can assume that he did, he grinned widely, he would have known differently. With the soft smile of Makua continued, there is indeed a self and when we are embodied, there are actually two. There's the immortal self that serves as our personal creator and source that remains always in the spirit world, our Amakua, and there is a self that we develop in each lifetime, a composite of our three souls, spiritual soul seed, mental soul seed, and body soul. When our physical body dies, our energetic aspect that carries a composite of the three embodied souls detaches. Astral body. It then exists for a period of time independent of the physical body in a free state thus maintaining its integration as a personal pattern for as long as it needs. The breath is the connecting link between the energy body and the physical body. And when we release our last breath at life's end, we release our ha and our soul cluster is free. So our ha, I think ha is referring to um, the breath of life and the soul cluster is referring to the, the three souls that he just mentioned. Slowly at first and then with increasing speed, our energetic body, along with our personal soul cluster, loses its attachments to this world and returns to its source, to its amakua. At that point, the personal self in whom we have invested so much during life is subsumed into our immortal soul field, into our real self. So perhaps what people have come to believe regarding Buddhist statements on the self is not what the Buddha really meant. Perhaps his students simply didn't understand it. Makua paused, then concluded his thoughts. Amakua is thus a vibration, and each part of the word has meaning. Makua means parent, and a means time. So your personal Amakua, your higher self, is your parent, your ancestor in time. And this is where I was just amazed to have uh, come across this having already experienced um, the mainframe. This includes all your ancestors who were your past selves and who are archived within the energetic field of your higher self. Of course, it is through the so-called subconscious aspect through our body soul that we are in constant connection to our Amakua, our oversoul source self, our higher mind of light that communicates directly with us during life through the medium of intuition and inspiration. 
through insight and through dreams and visions. And the last part here, Hank, Hank responds, ah, this is why philosophers and mystics across time have always referred to dreams as the royal road to wisdom. Pali says precisely, and these dreams and visions come to us from our armakua through our body soul. It is our intellect that continually judges what is received, what it receives and that creates doubt and separation. Yet, it is our Amakua who dreams. So what's being presented as a provisional belief or a provisional possible reality is that the same in the same way that we dream of these dream selves that are unaware of our waking life, we can consider that our incarnations in this earth learning system are dreams of a higher intelligence that is also us. So what I've found is that the more refined or the higher orders of intelligence are aware of what is happening on these uh, less refined or uh, you know, these grosser levels of manifestation, but the grosser levels of manifestation are not aware of what are, what is happening at the subtler levels. So it's possible, for example, that the higher self has its own higher self, some other advanced or some higher form of intelligence that uh, is having or experiencing configurations of reality that it is not privy to. In the same way that we have to awaken to the the higher self, um, it's possible that the higher self awakens into another magnitude or order of existence. And this is also what is uh, suggested at the end of Ultimate Journeys um, in the Journeys trilogy when uh, when the whole thing is really revealed to Bob, to Bob Monroe, what he's presented with is a form of existence that is completely outside of reality as we know it uh, and reality as the higher self, even as the higher self knows it, or as these um, formless dimensions, formless configurations of experience. Uh, it's beyond even those. So uh, inconceivable is a pretty, uh, a pretty apt word or what could be the case. So this is uh, from a, a book called uh, Matrix 5, which um, is fantastic if you could look past all the conspiracy stuff. I mean, it just like doesn't end with the alien stuff. But <laughs> for the parts of it that are about the higher self, it was very uh, illuminating. Uh, really, really good stuff. So this in the picture here, this gigantic jellyfish looking thing, the, uh, the orb is the higher self or uh, this artist's particular rendition of that. And these streams of light are the uh, silver or golden cords that are talked about in out of body experiences and in astral projection. So each of these cords goes down into this termination point, which is like an orb of light. And those are the various incarnations. Like one of those lights would be you. Um, but this is the best that the artist could could make because in actuality, there's there's thousands of these, these streams and these cords that all uh, essentially link up into the, the higher self. So in this this particular uh orb or uh, jellyfish nebula looking thing this is just how this particular artist um perceived it or experienced it i'm sure it's different for everyone um 
or maybe or maybe not i don't know my experience with the higher self was actually quite like this it was a uh, a nebulous field of light but in another out of body experience it, it manifested as a like a sun a sun um within clouds uh, one moment All right, so back to Hank. And he states here, it is none other than our higher self, our oversoul, our Amakua, who, who serves as our personal creator at the beginning of life and the repository to which our soul complex returns at the end of each incarnational cycle. It is our oversoul who dreams and who is dreaming right now, even as I write these words where I am and you read them wherever you are. So the teachings on uh, Amakua and Oversoul are um, explained in detail in this particular book, The Bowl of Light uh, by Hank Wesselman. And there he talks more about how he met um, Hale Makua and a bit about Hale Makua's uh, personal story as well. So really great, great read. And it's outside of the Spirit Walker trilogy. So you don't have to read the whole trilogy in order to read this. But if the things that were shared today really spoke to you and you want to hear um, an indigenous elder's uh, point of view on Oversoul and his direct experience with it, then this is really a great, a great resource. So he says this, and uh, we'll, we'll end the, this little PowerPoint with this. This energy, this tapestry of Aloha is the most powerful of all the forces in the universe. And only when, are, when you are in a state of aloha, only then can you truly touch the universe. Only when you are in a state of love and practicing kindness, only then will the universe as well as the ancestors respond. This is why the greatest discovery you will ever make is the discovery of yourself, and particularly the discovery of your relationship with your higher self, your amakua, this is the godlike being who really listens to your prayers, responds in ways that are mysterious, and sends occasional messengers to earth. And here's some lava from the, uh, I don't know if it's from the big island, but <laughs> from Hawaii. But uh, yeah, the, the notion or the, the teachings that uh, Holly shared about how the oversoul or the higher self is this repository of information and it's the repository of all of these incarnational streams is exactly what Bob Monroe discovers in Far Journeys and in Ultimate Journey. So I just wanted to um, share like a, a perspective on the same thing that was from a different author. And yeah, highly recommend the Spirit Walker trilogy. It's, I think it's a bit more dense. The books are a bit longer than the Journeys trilogy, but if you ever have extra time or if you have a particular affinity for shamanism, you know, I really, really recommend um, that particular series. So, so for, for today, we're gonna do Focus 12. I'm gonna give a couple, um, just a couple words of advice before we jump into the into the meditation. 
uh, maybe up to this point, you've already been working with an access point, maybe not in the higher self yoga playlist uh, that's on the YouTube channel. I go over um, how to create an access point. It's just an imaginary place where you have a conversation. You pretend to have a conversation with your higher self, however it manifests or however you would like it to manifest. And you just keep going there and you see what begins to transpire and you'd be surprised. So one of the things that came from me working with my particular access point was um, this guide that I had met in OBEs a long time ago uh, reappeared and introduced an idea that hadn't been some, wasn't something that was on my radar at all. Um, it was basically like a, character or a personal development exercise that I was instructed to do um, every night before I went to sleep. So every night before I would go to sleep, I would go to this access point and the guide would say, okay, so, um, you know, on the left column, say uh, what, what you could have done better today. <laughs> And uh, on the right column, have the things that you did that you're grateful for. And tomorrow, resolve to, to do better. It's very interesting because in non-dual teachings, there's, there's kind of this like offhanded disregard for the personality. And at times, it can appear that... Um, character development is is not uh, important because there there's there is no character right you're just you're, you're developing a <laughs> you're refining or developing a dream self so that's an impression that we can have but it's not exactly the most uh mature way to approach spirituality so the fact that this had came through a focus 12 or an access point um interaction gives you an example of how guidance can actually appear it doesn't it doesn't have to always be some like profound message or answer i mean it can just be a reminder it can just be a feeling it can just be the sense of contact it can be anything yeah it doesn't have to be anything mystical um by doing the by using focus 12 and by beginning to familiar familiarize with this higher self concept and use the higher self affirmation which is higher self now higher self now is one of the affirmations another one is i now connect with my higher self another one would be i am my higher self another one could be take me to my higher self. These are all um, versions of the same concept connecting with the higher self. So you can experiment with them and use them at your own uh, discretion and in your own way. So the idea is that I, I keep this open-ended like some of you may feel like, oh, you don't like, oh, I don't really, I don't really know what I'm doing here. Like I'm doing the focus 12 exercise, but I don't, I don't really know what I'm doing. Like this isn't, this isn't like a clear cut. It's not as clear cut as like physical yoga, you know, where you're told, okay, bend over like this and do this posture, bend over like this, bend backwards, reach for your toes. You know, that's all pretty cut and dry. It's pretty understandable, but this may feel more open-ended or more uh, even you know like you don't know what you're doing so the idea is to is based on that sense of not really being sure of what's going on you can use that to spend more time alone just sensing what this actually is for you right if I give you a prescription and I tell you what to do in more detail, it could it could condition the experiences that you're going to have. 
So that's why I'm being more wary about that. I, I, I would like all of you to just actually, you know, spend more time alone in meditation, lucid dreaming or OBEs using this higher self now concept and just seeing how that turns out for you and what is revealed, you know, because for you, it could be an energetic thing. Um, it could be sensation based for me. It's really like, of course it's OBEs, but for you, that may not be it. You know, it may be something completely different. It may just be a sense of direction. Like when you say these affirmations and you do this work and you study this higher self material, you start to have a sense that your navigation is getting clearer. You're like, oh, yeah, maybe I shouldn't, you know, go down that path or or open that door. Maybe that that's not a good idea. But you wouldn't have had that insight before. You wouldn't have had that clarity. But now that you're doing OBEs and lucid dream and, and meditation in this way, that clarity is starting to, to arise. So I'll stop the recording here.